Well, well, welcome back once again, guys, to another episode of the Moor Army Podcast. Welcome to this Tuesday's edition of the show. Hope everybody's out there is having a, well, had a good weekend and is having a good week so far. Um, plenty to talk about on the podcast today, as always. So welcome back to another episode where we talk about all the stuff that's sort of hitting the headlines here in the UK and beyond and some personal stuff that I'd like to talk about as well so but yes guys hope you all had a great weekend since i last spoke to you on thursday um you haven't checked out last thursday's episode you can go back and check it out here on spotify or apple music or if you're listening to us here on the youtube channel you can go back and listen to us on there if you are listening to us on the youtube channel please subscribe to this video or this channel sorry and drop a like on this video for the podcast today as well but anyway yes guys plenty to talk about on the podcast today wow what a what a turn of events since the last time i spoke to you um, some subjects that I'm going to be talking about today can be a little bit, um, how you going to say, out there. So if you are easily offended, at some parts of this podcast, you might want to turn off. Um, hence why this podcast is called Unleash, as you all know. Um, if you're a new listener to the podcast, hello. Um, we do talk about quite a lot of things here on the podcast, but it's got some stuff to talk about today that some people might not like. So if you want to skip forward, you can if you want to, or if you want to turn off, certainly you can do that as well, but it's entirely up to yourself what you want to do. We just wanted to give that wee warning today before I continue on in today's podcast. Anyway guys, uh, as I said, you welcome back to the show for another episode on this Tuesday morning. Looking outside this morning, the sun is shining, beautiful day here in Northern Ireland. Really chilly, woke up this morning, a little bit frosty this morning, a bit cold, but it's just typical weather in January here in Northern Ireland as always. Never freaking changes, never surprises me at all. The weather we've had recently as well. But uh, yes, I had a pretty good weekend, but we'll talk about that in just a wee second. But before going any further in the podcast today, guys, just want to get the usual stuff out of the way as we always like to do so here at the start of every episode. So if you're new to the podcast for the first time, hello, welcome. If you're a regular listener to the podcast, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us here at the Moor Army Podcast, you can by the following methods. You can contact us by email. If you have any questions you'd like to ask me, which I do like to have a segment here in the show where I'd like to answer your questions and more, you can get in touch with me if you have any uh, ideas for the podcast or anything you'd like to hear me talk about. Uh, the email address is moorarmypodcast at yahoo.com. That's moorarmypodcast at yahoo.com. Also, you can contact me on social media. Instagram, which is official Matthew Moore. You want to contact the show on, on Facebook, you can contact the official Moore Army YouTube channel Facebook page, which is the uh, just named Moore Army YouTube channel. Please head over to the Facebook page, drop a like on there. Um, I would appreciate it. Um, I'm not on Twitter or X, as you all, all your regular listeners know, but I am not on there. I prefer to stay off that platform because it's full of crazy people, should we say? Just being nice. I'm trying to be nice today. <laughs> so far <laughs> um, I mean, You can follow me on TikTok as well I am there on TikTok as well Which is official Matthew Moore on TikTok You can contact me on there um, Or you can follow me on there as well I am on threads as well guys But I don't really post much on threads to be quite honest um, Also if you want to go to our website To get some of your Moor Army podcast merchandise, also Moor Army YouTube channel merchandise, which have just dropped some new stuff there recently. Um, And also check out all the vlogs and listen to the podcasts and do everything else. It's a Moor Army hub. You can go to our website, moorarmy.co.uk. That's moorarmy.co.uk. Guys, some stuff I want to talk about on the podcast today, which is some stuff is heartbreaking. Some stuff is a little bit extreme. As I did say at the start of this podcast, you want to flick through one of the stories that I'm going to be talking about today. You certainly can. Um, I also got some of our stuff I want to talk about today in the podcast that's sort of knocking about the news um, as well. So, yes, let's get right into it. Um, what have I been up to since the last time I spoke to you guys before I got into some of the subjects today? Had a pretty good weekend. Um was a football on Saturday with Lewis. Uh we won, which was great. 
I met a couple of new uh, people who watches the channel. So hello to you guys out there. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching the YouTube channel as well. I appreciate it. Um, Saturday night, we had a good night. Lewis and I was sat up and watched the WWE's, one of the biggest events of the year, the Royal Rumble, which was excellent. We had a great night, Lewis and I. Bit of father and some time the whole day. Actually, we spent the entire day with each other, which is great. Um, didn't see very much of my daughter this past weekend because of being away uh, working and being out with her boyfriend and going to someone's house to stay overnight and it was just like one thing after another just never really seen much of her over the weekend so this is the joys guys of having a fucking 18 year old daughter you never really see very much anymore um but yeah we had a pretty good weekend an excellent weekend i actually spent some of sunday afternoon um we we'll watched the liverpool game on sunday afternoon which liverpool won by the way um but yeah, I was sitting down Sunday afternoon, I sat down for about 45 minutes with a coffee, just sort of responding to some of your questions on Instagram, some of your message requests, some of your emails and whatnot, I was just sort of answering a few you guys with a coffee on Sunday, um, which it was some, read some interesting stuff on there, a lot of you guys always send me a lot of emails and questions, everybody was I actually love, so thank you for that, I appreciate it. Um, Somebody's actually responded to me right away, actually, on Instagram. So I had a wee chat with a couple of you as well, which is brilliant. Um, but no, it was great chatting to you on Sunday, guys. So thank you very much for all your messages. Um, I do appreciate it. As I always say every week, I appreciate it. Every single message that you send me. Um, every question you send me and more. So, but yeah, it was an overall, it was a good weekend. Um, but before the weekend came around, guys, after we recorded the podcast on Thursday, <laughs> Thursday and Friday, well, Thursday especially, um, like, what, what what happened on Thursday, for me and my personal life, shocked me. Well, we'll start off with, 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 with obviously, it's going to be a football matter here for the next couple of minutes, so if you don't like football, you can skip by. Um, the news broke the other day that, I couldn't believe when I saw this. I mean, obviously, I knew that this person was going to leave eventually one day, but not as right now at the end of the season. Liverpool announced that Jurgen Klopp is leaving Liverpool at the end of the season. And it was... Sorry, that, that news broke on Friday, sorry. And I was sort of sitting here. Because on Thursday night, guys, as you all know, if you listen to this podcast regularly, I always tell you, on Thursday nights, I always have a beer, a beer or two with my brother on Thursday nights and stuff. But this week, it didn't. I ended up having on my own. I had a pretty late night, actually. It was a little bit fucking tiddly, actually. It was really funny. I actually had a great night on Thursday night. Um, good few drinks and video calls with good friends and stuff. And had a good laugh and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was lying on Friday. And I, I knew, because on Friday, guys, my day on Friday normally consists of a day off from, from, from work and everything else. So... In the morning time, I would get up and get Lewis off to school, get stuff done around the house, normally head to the shop, do a few odds and ends around the house, run a bit of a few errands and stuff, and then we'll have an hour or two. After, because obviously I have a few drinks on the Thursday night, I'll have a wee lie down for a wee nap for an hour or two before Lewis comes home from school, and then I start getting stuff ready for Saturday for football and do your things around the house, like wash Lewis's uniform and do our bits and bobs again. As I said, he'd run a few errands from Friday and whatnot. Um... But I was just sort of lying here. Uh, I thought, you know, I want to lie on the sofa for an hour. And I'll have a wee, a wee nap for half an hour or whatever. And the next minute, my phone starts going, bling, 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 bling. And I'm going, who the fuck is texting me at this time of day? I mean, I'll ignore it and leave it. But something in my head kept telling me there was something not right. So I picked up the phone. And a friend of mine, William, massive Liverpool supporter, had texted me on WhatsApp. He was like, this news and this news. And I'm like, what? So I turned the TV over to... Sky Sports News and boom. No pun intended the Jurgen Club like boom. <laughs> um news broke. Liverpool just put out a, a, an interview. Jurgen Klopp did an announced that he was leaving at the end of the season. And I sat for like at least an hour watching all this news coming in and I was on social media having a look around. A lot of you guys were straight onto my Instagram and straight onto my uh, Rural Army YouTube channel Facebook page messaging me and people I know personally were messaging me on my personal Facebook and they were saying like you know 
what the hell is what, what Jurgen Klopp's leaving? Like, what are you? And then people were contacting me on Instagram saying, Matthew, you, you got to do a podcast tonight, talk about Jurgen Klopp leaving. What the hell's going on? You know, you're going to do a video on YouTube about it, which I'm going to talk about on the on the YouTube channel probably today. Um, I did put a video out last night, guys, if you want to watch it. Um, with Lewis and I, it's just a <laughs> funny video. Um, but I was just watching the news coming in and and I'm looking at it going, fucking hell, Jurgen Klopp's actually leaving. But the thing is, is I found out about an hour or so later that he, he told the club in November that he was leaving at the end of the season. And his, his, his term that he used was that he's running out of energy and he he needs a break. And obviously social media have blew up about this. I've had a lot of different supporters coming in, taking the piss, like Man United supporters, Everton supporters, Chelsea supporters, City supporters, Arsenal supporters. You know, and I've also had a few wee fucking smart arses coming in on Instagram, which have been I've been blocked and reported with their their derogatory messages as usual, because you always get those wee weeded troll wee pricks that always come out of nowhere, nowhere when they think they can have a wee dig at you. Nice try. Um, but no, I, I just couldn't believe it. The fact that Jürgen is leaving at the end of the season. Now, I know I'm not going to ramble on too much into the podcast because of all things I want to talk about on the on the podcast today. But I mean, like, fuck me. Like, this is the end of an era. I mean, people are now comparing this to the time whenever Bill Shankly left Liverpool. Um, when Kenny left Liverpool. You know, it's just... It's, it's, it's just... A decision that has sent shockwaves around the, the football world, not just around Liverpool's world, the club as a whole, the whole football world's like, whoa, you know, Jurgen Klopp's actually leaving. You know, where's he going to do? I mean, he he's, has stated that he will never manage another club in England, ever. With respect to him for that. But if he, at the end of the day, guys, if he's, if he's announcing that he, he's burnt out and he needs to go for his own mental health, his own well being, his own physical being. You know, you gotta respect that guys because he's been there since twenty fifteen. That's nearly nine years he's been there. You know, and he's won everything. Well apart from the Europa League. Which we could win that this season because we're still in that competition. Um I mean he's won us everything. He promised us trophies. He he's won us everything. And I know people are going to come in and go Oh, he did, especially Man United supporters. Oh, he was there nine years and he only won the Premier League once and he only won... Like, f- fuck you. I mean, come in and, and say what you want. Okay, yes, Alex Ferguson, or Sir Alex Ferguson, as I like to call him, is an iconic manager, but he was there from, like, the 80s. Klopp was only there from 2015. <laughs> and you can compare it and say, oh, but in, in nine years, United won all these trophies. Let me tell you something. Man, Alex Ferguson was there from the 80s and it took him years as well to win his first trophy which was the FA Cup a lot of United men don't seem to remember that I remember a Pacific game even watching that game on, on TV one time with my dad where they were playing who were they playing was it was it Forrest in the cup I think it was Forrest uh, it was Nottingham Forrest and if he had lost that game to Nottingham Forrest in that cup back in 1991 Fergie was on the verge of getting the fucking sack. So a lot of United supporters out there forget about that. You know what I mean? Okay, yes, he was successful and he won was it 13 Premier League titles and he won all this here. You know, that's, that's fine. But Fergie was there for a long, lot longer than fucking Klopp. So, but in our, going back to our situation as Liverpool supporters, it's a, it's a sad day for the club. It's a heartbreaking day for the club. It's a day that we never thought it would see coming. You know, I spoke to Lewis about it, my son, and he was like, Dad, I can't believe Jürgen's leaving. And I'm like, I know. I know. It's crazy. You know, there was rumours going around there a year or so ago that he was going to be offered the German national team's job. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he took that because obviously he's German and, you know, when you're a little bit older in life, you know, an international job's a little bit easier because obviously you're not dealing with the day-to-day operation of a club where you're playing sometimes two and three matches a week. At least with internationals, you're not playing all the time. You know what I mean? And if Jürgen said he's, he, he's, he's, what's the word he used? He's run out of energy. Then maybe a national team job would be better for him. But again, the way he completely changed our club and from 2015 to now, 
is phenomenal. I mean, I remember the, the, like growing up as a kid in the 80s, Liverpool obviously were successful with we winning championships and the FA Cups and you know League Cups and things like that. And then when the 90s came around, obviously it was all dominated by the Manchester United and Arsenal won a few titles in there and Chelsea won a lot of titles in the early 2000s. And, you know, as a Liverpool fan, you were sitting back and watching all this and you were just like, oh my God. Okay, yes, we've done the treble in 2001. One that uh, was now known as the Europa League. It was called the UEFA Cup back then and the League Cup and the FA Cup all in one season. And in the space of like, I think it was so, a, a period of time we won the Community Shield as well. And we won our... You know, it was just a period of time between 2001 and 2002. And then again, um, we won the Champions League in 05, we won the FA Cup in 06, you know, we got to the Champions League final in 2007 as well, which we lost. Um, but, you know, it was sort of like drips and drabs of success. When you were looking across, up the road at Manchester United, they were winning league titles every year, and Chelsea were winning titles, and Arsenal were winning titles, and... You know, Jesus Christ, even Leicester City and Blackburn Rovers won the Premier League title before we did. And that's saying something. But Jürgen came in in 2015, completely changed the whole culture of the club. You know, the way he used that phrase, from doubters to believers, and he completely changed the whole club. You know, even the atmosphere of match days, the experience. Just, I mean, guys, I've sat at games in Liverpool and just a, I mean, I remember one day I went there a few seasons ago. Was it last season? I think it was the season before we played Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. Was it Atletico? It was. It was when Suarez was back there, and I was sitting right behind the bench at Anfield. My vlog's on the YouTube channel if you want to go and watch it. And I'm sitting there, like, literally feet away from Jurgen Klopp, and I was watching that man on that sideline. And the aura and the the... The feeling that he gives you just him have his presence in that stadium just made you believe that anything was possible with the Liverpool team. I mean, he's created so many memories for us over the years, you know. Obviously didn't start off too well by losing, you know, the Europa League final and, and the League Cup final in the one season and then losing the Champions League final um in twenty eighteen to Real Madrid, which was an absolute nightmare. And then going from that to winning the Champions League in nineteen then winning the league title and then the World Club Championship and winning League Cups, FA Cups, Community Shields. You know, he's just won a lot. He's pretty pretty much won everything apart bar obviously the, I, I still like to call it the UEFA Cup, but it's now the Europa League. Um and he could do that this season before he goes. But the things that he done around the club, just the whole entire the way he just changed the whole club as a whole. And yes, you might say, well, but he's only the fucking manager. Alex Ferguson done it at Manchester United. You know, other managers have done it at other clubs. You just change, it just turns your club into a, into a belief that you can, you, anything's possible on the pitch. And he done it. And it's going to be sad to see him go. It's going to be a heartbreaking thing to see him go. I was going to go to the last home game of the season against Wolves. Fuck, I've no chance of that happening now unless I've got like a couple of thousand pounds to spend on it because it's it's undoubtedly sold out already. No no surprise. His last home game at Anfield will be a, a sad, sad day. There'll be tears shredded, no doubt. And, you know, hopefully after that last home game, it'll be, we'll be lifting the Premier League title, hopefully. Um, we'll also be going on to the Europa League final if we get there too as well, fingers crossed. Maybe an FA Cup final. We've got the League Cup final coming up here next month, which is excellent. Um, still trying to get tickets for that for Lewis and I. Um, if not, we'll be doing a, a, a League Cup final special video for the YouTube channel as well. If we don't get to the final itself. But no, guys, it's, it's a sad day for the club. I mean, who? Now the question is now as well, who is going to fill the boots of Jurgen Klopp? Who is going to be the next manager? A lot of people are talking about it online about being Xavi Alonso, who's doing a fantastic job at the minute in Germany. Um, people are saying about Stevie Gerrard. Honestly, no, I wouldn't. You know, okay, he's a club legend, and you know he he was one of the best players Liverpool's ever had, and always been a big lover of Stevie Gerrard. But I wouldn't. I don't think he's the right man for the job. To be quite honest. Um, there's a few other names floating about. More people are talking about nice Xavi Alonso. I mean, everybody knows who Xavi Alonso is. If you, if you don't, you've lived under a rock. I mean, he was part of the successful Liverpool team that 
you know, won the Champions League in 2005, won the FA Cup in 2006. Fantastic player. Um, then moved on to, to Pastors New. He, he's, he's a World Cup winner. He's a Euros winner with Spain. You know, World Cup winner with Spain. He's just an, an unbel- he was an unbelievable player back in the day. And he's doing a very good job in his early stages of his managerial career. Would he be the right man for the job? Who knows? But only time will tell. But in closing this subject about about Jurgen Klopp, obviously I'm going to miss him. The club's going to miss him. Um, it, it, it's just, it, people are saying, like, you know, it's the same whenever the likes, whenever um, when, when, when Bob Paisley left and Shankly left and Kenny had left. It's just, he's left a mark on our club that'll never be forgotten. Now, there was rumor, there was talk about the other day. I was watching a wee segment there on, on the news the other day. They were saying, you know, maybe he takes a year or two away. Would he ever come back to the club? I've seen things like that happen before. Um, but, no, I've, I, he said he wants to take time away with his family and stuff like that. And then I heard a story that he was building a house abroad as well to go and move on to and stuff. But he did say in an interview the other day that, you know, when he was a, a he wants to see the world and he wants to travel the world. And that's understandable at the end of the day. You know, I mean, a, a football manager now, especially in the Premier League, is a tough job to have. And if he's getting to the point of burnout where he needs time away to recharge his batteries and spend time with his family and, and, and whatnot, then you got to respect that. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, yes, he's going to be loved and missed by everybody. But at the end of the day, the club will move on and the club will move forward. It's the same as anything, any business move forward. Um, It's it's just sad. It's a sad thing as a Liverpool supporter. And I'm not going to babble on too much more about it because obviously you talk about all the different things that he's done and all those moments that he's had as a manager. But... At the end of the day, as a Liverpool fan, it's a heartbreaking situation, and you know it's going to he, he's going to be hard to replace. And I'm hoping, for the club's sake, they don't bring in somebody who's a complete and fucking total numpty, who's going to end up getting us back into the situation we were in before Jurgen Klopp even came in. We need to bring in the right guy who's going to do the good job and move the club forward. In the same direction, steer the ship the same way that Jurgen was doing it. But only time will say. But then I was talking to a mate of mine the other day, and he was saying, Well, here, you never know, Matthew, you might change his mind like Fergie did years ago whenever Fergie said he was going to retire, and he ended up changing his mind at the last minute and staying on for an hour, was it two years or something like that? He might change his mind. I mean, well, if he changed his fucking mind, I wouldn't care. I, if I ever saw him, I'd run up and give him a big, massive hug over and say, Thank you for staying. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. I think he. I think he knows himself. You know yourself, guys. If you're in a job or you're in a situation where you're a burnout and you need time away to rest and recharge, and you, you need that to walk away in certain situations in life, even in general too, you need to do it for yourself. You know, I mean, if the man's feeling burnt out and tired, and he needs a he needs to walk away for his own pain. I mean, he's what fifty eight now, fifty nine. Okay, fair enough. But only time will tell. But he will be missed. And he's created a lot of memories. I've been at games as well with memories as well. And obviously over the years as well. But I'll never forget. But just one of those things, isn't it? Football moves on. This is what happens in life. But anyway, guys, moving on to the next subject that I want to talk about today. And this is the part of the podcast. If you want to move away and skip on to the next part, you can certainly do that. Um, these first two, two subjects I'm talking about today are kind of like sport related a wee bit. But they are big headline news in, in the world. Um this one here is fuck me. I, I, when I heard, obviously the stories about this person last year, I was kind of like, mm. I'm a wee bit surprised, but I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? I'm not. Uh, it's hard to. Su- but what's happened in the last couple of days? But come out last week, and then oh my god, it was just like holy shit. So if you're easily offended you can turn this part of the podcast off. Guys, you all know, I um, have been since I was like four or five years of age, I've been a big fan of wrestling. WWF back in the day, it was now WWE. Unless you live under a rock, everybody knows what WWE is. It's wrestling. Everybody knows what it is. You know, everybody knows who Hulk Hogan is, Andre the Giant, The Rock, obviously because he's an actor now and he's a big movie star, Dwayne Johnson. Stone Cold Steve Austin, obviously 
lot of everybody in the world now knows who John Cena is. Now he's a big movie star too as well. Uh, current WWE, you've got the likes of this, the guys on Logan Paul, for example, the guy who is a worldwide well-known YouTuber um, who now sells the famous Drink Prime, which we talk about all the time on our YouTube channel. He's in WWE now as well. We've had people come through the doors of WWE for years, even when it was the old WWF back in the day, which I miss those days, all except for the days I grew up in. But we all know who runs that main place. Well, did. Now, Vince McMahon, the guy who created, well, bought it off his dad and then turned it into this worldwide juggernaut, this multi-billion dollar company that is all around the world. I mean, even if you don't watch WWE, you've heard of it, or WWF back in the day, everybody's heard of it. You've either seen it on the news, or you've seen it on TV, or you've heard about it on the radio, or your kids watch it, or you've watched it when you were a kid and don't watch it anymore. Everybody knows what it is. I've been watching it since I was a kid. My son and I is into it more than what he's ever been, which is great because it's a wee thing we watch together to bond, like we did last weekend when we watched the Royal Rumble. This time last year, rumours and allegations come out about the owner. Well, should I say, he was the full owner until obviously then this new company came in called Endeavour, TKO, who merged WWE with UFC, which was a big, massive story last year where these two big juggernauts were being brought together under the one umbrella. Um, there was all these rumours flying around that apparently the owner, Vince McMahon, was paying girls off to sign NDAs, which is non-disclosure order, for apparent, apparent relationships uh, behind closed doors. He was accused of all this like sexual innuendos with women and all this other stuff that was going on. There was rumours going around for years and years and years. Women accused Vince of all these different stories and saying that women done they done this to women, they done that to women and all that. He, he then announced his retirement from WWE. Then in January last year, he then emerged back on the board as the chairman once again, as the main shareholder in the company. And obviously a lot of people weren't happy about that and stuff because obviously Vince you know, said he was retiring. People were saying that you know for years and years and years, Vince would never retire. He would end up dying in the chair of his office. He would just... He just die in WWE because he's what seventy eight now seventy nine. But re- in the last couple of days, another court cases or another cases came out where you can actually read the public documents that Vince McMahon is now being accused of sex trafficking and more disgusting allegations, including rape and more. And when I saw this come out in the public eye and the main story broke by the Wall Street Journal, I was like, holy shit. I read the 67-page court document and I was in shock. I heard, obviously, all these stories for years that Vince was a bit of a ladies' man, he was a bit of a pervert, and, you know, I heard all the allegations against him a lot of a year or so ago, Parney paid off women so much money to be quiet about their affair and stuff like that. But this one particular girl has now came forward and has said that there was an agreement made, an NDA was signed that apparently he paid her $3 million to be quiet after the first million was paid and payments had stopped. But she's now come out and said that. Told all these, these things that apparently had happened to her from with Vince, one of his associates, and also, and you're going to know this, apparently there was stuff sent to this former UFC star stroke WWE wrestler, who we all know, all you sports fans out there know, Brock Lesnar, the guy who's a former UFC heavyweight champion, former wrestling champion, the, the guy's known worldwide for his, should we say, the way he, who he is, and what he is, and stuff like that. Apparently, Vince was sharing stuff with him, and there was rumors going around. Apparently, that apparently Brock was involved in some sexual activities with this girl as well. I don't know why it's true or not, but some of the stuff that these people are being accused of, what they done to this young lady, is fucking disgusting. And I'm just, I'm, I'm literally going to tell as it is. 
I'm a sh- at, at this present time right now, I'm disgusted to be a wrestling fan for the first time in my life because of all this crap that's been going on. I understand. I I talk about this to Tony all the time because Tony's watched wrestling since we were kids as well. And I've said, like, sure, Vince is a dirty old man anyway and he'll never retire and he's a pervert and he's always, like, been an old pervert for years now. There. We used to laugh about it and stuff, but fuck me, guys. The, 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 the report's out there. If you go out there and look for it, it's on the Wall Street Journal website. And a lot of people share it. You can search it on Google, you'll find it. The, the allegations that, that girl is saying that what them them two men, Vince and his associate, did to her is beyond degrading. I mean, it is beyond degrading of a human being. And I'm not, wrestling aside for a moment, I'm going to talk about this. What, as a human being, what she's accusing this man of, and these men of doing to her is beyond disgusting. It is beyond degrading as a, de, uh, degrading a person as a human being. And I'm sorry, but if someone had done that to my fucking daughter, I would be in jail for a very long time. At that, I don't want to say too much on it because this podcast is on YouTube as well, and I don't want to get kicked, the, the, the channel kicked, kicked out and closed. I know obviously it's an unleashed podcast and stuff, but some of the stuff that they done to that poor girl, sex trafficking, sharing her out with other men, I don't even want to repeat this, but like urinating on her and doing other disgusting things on this poor lady, the way they treated her, the thing, if you read the court documents, guys, it will literally... If you're not easily offended, you'll be fine. If you're easily offended, do not fucking read it. And for what I've been re- watching, like former wrestlers and former people who've worked for Vince come out over the last couple of days, it's it's it, it's just, if, if he is found guilty of this, in my opinion, he'll go to jail for this. And for what I've heard the last 24, 48 hours, especially and over the weekend too, is that his family starting to distance from him as well. And do you blame him? Now, after the Royal Rumble paper at the weekend, his son-in-law, who helps run creative storylines and all for the, the TV and all that stuff like that, was at a, a press conference, and obviously the media, you knew, were going to ask about the, alleg- the allegations on the news. And they answered the questions as professional as possible, saying that they're trying to focus on the positives and they're trying to move away from all this negatives and stuff they got. Which is understandable because they can only say certain things because they have a board to answer to and stockholders and stuff like that, which is completely understandable. But going away from the wrestling standpoint of it again, guys, the point I'm trying to make here is if these allegations are true, what they done to that poor girl is beyond degrading. You know, even the sex trafficking, sharing it amongst other men, Doing all things to these women, like for example, there was parts of the, the report you read where they were locking her in offices and they were raping her and there were, like, you know, there's text screenshots of text messages on the report and all saying that he was texting her saying that he owned her and, you know, uh, you, you just have to, it's beyond describable. You, once you read it, you'll look at it and you'll go, holy fucking shit, that is beyond degrading of a human being. It is sick, it's disgusting, and as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to Vince McMahon and his associate, whose name is John Laurinaitis, by the way, who I never fucking liked anyway, raspy old bastard he was, I hated him, there's a lot of boys that used to work for the company even hated him too, Um, those two are finished, when it comes to even business in general, they're finished, you'll never see them in the public eye again, if they don't go to fucking jail, which I think they probably will be, if it's if this is proven in a court of law, I mean, sex trafficking alone is is disgusting. But some of the stuff that they done to that poor girl, if that was my daughter, I would go to fucking jail for them. I'd kill them. Disgusting beyond belief. Now you hear about all these stories, you know, in the news all the time about prostitution and sex trafficking and you know abuse of children and. And, and and all this different stuff that you hear, which is just disgusting, you know, when you hear about, you know, all these things that happen to women and men, you know, and all this as abuse and, 
you know, domestic violence in relationships and all that stuff. But some of the stuff that they done to that poor girl physically is just fucking sick. And to be quite honest with you, I couldn't believe it. And I spoke to my friend about it the other day and he was like, Matty, what do you think about that? And I just went, "He, I'm glad that this is starting to come out and that old bastard is finally being caught out. Now, don't get me wrong. For what he done for the wrestling business, from taking it from this wee small territory into a big juggernaut, and providing entertainment for me as a child growing up, watching all these big stars, the likes of the Hulk Hogan's and the Andre the Giants, and then growing into the air when I was a teenager, the likes of the Rock, you know, Dwayne Johnson, and all there, hundreds and hundreds of hours of entertainment. No, couldn't be, couldn't say, thank enough for that. But what was going on behind the scenes? I mean, you've seen it for years in the 80s, like TV reports, news reports. You can watch them all on YouTube. You see Vince and all these talk shows talking about you being accused of this and accused of that. Staff doing this to the other young members of staff. And, you know, Vince denying everything. 1992 or 93, he took on the, the government about the steroid scandal where he was being accused of having steroids in his fucking company, which nor, he was on the verge of going to jail, but he actually beat the government in court. Then in 1999, when, when, when one of his wrestlers fell to his death live on a pay-per-view, he was in a lot of shit because of that, because he continued the show on, even though the wrestler fucking died in the, on the way to the hospital during the pay-per-view, because he fell like 75 foot from the scene and bombed down in front of all the fans and fucking basically died in the ring. He had to pay a lot of damages for that. All the, all the allegations that he was accused of of being... Knowing about all the stuff that was going on in his company, which he swept under the carpet for years and years and years, and then obviously recently the, the girls were making the allegations about him. He was making all the payments out to keep him quiet. But now this girl's come out. And this might not be the end of it. <coughs> there could be more stories coming out about this in the coming weeks and months ahead. No one knows. But again, for when I read that 67-page court document, I was disgusted. I couldn't believe it, and I was just like, you dirty old, perverted, sick, twisted bastard. And he should burn in hell for that. If it's true. Anybody who does that, those things. I don't even want to describe some... I've described some of it, but I don't want to describe it all, because if I describe it all, I don't want to get kicked off the, uh, the platform that we're putting this podcast on. So, but... If you want to go and read it, guys, it's out there to read it, and it, you, you'll be shocked. But I just wanted to talk about that today because obviously I've been watching the WWF, WWE since I was about four or five years of age, and you know I've grew up with it. And I'll be honest with you guys, and I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm not defending this man at all, but his product helped me get through a lot of tough times in my life growing up as a child and through my bullying and my. You know, all the stuff that I went through as a, as a kid, it helped me get away from all my problems in life. And then when I was growing up as well, you know, when I was going through bad times, whether it be in my marriage or my personal life or whatever, um, wrestling was always my getaway. And then when my divorce happened and I was suffering mental health problems, I was struggling with depression and all that, my marriage and all that, and I lost all my, I lost everything and I ended up broke and homeless. Uh, on my broad sofa, wrestling was my getaway from all my issues and problems to help me switch off and uh, get away from it all. And again, any time I'm going through a bad bad day or a bad week or I'm going through a bad period of my life, it's one of the things that I would go to and watch just to switch off from the outside world. So for that, I'm thankful for that. A lot of people have other getaways like, you know, I don't know, like spending time with their friends or going out for walks or, I don't know, doing all these different things. So, but wrestling was one of mine, especially from a little boy, because it helped me get away from all the reality of life and helped me th not think about all my problems that was going on in my world and my in my life at the time. So, for that, I'm obviously grateful for it. So, but before I'm going to move on, I got guys in the a couple of things that I've saw in the news today. But I just thought I'd bring that up in the podcast today. It's fucking disgusting, and you know, I, I, I'm hoping for this girl. I'm not going to mention her name. Because I don't want to, but I don't even know her names on the on the document. You can read it and stuff. But uh, I hope she can come. Miss Girl can obviously live with this for the rest of her life. But I'm hoping this girl can get this clar uh, this sorted and dealt with. And 
she can for her own mental health and her own well-being that she can move on from this and try and live some type of normal life even though it's going to be hard to um after all this thing that she's been through which is just horrible so it is so i don't know it's a it's a it's a, it's a bad one guys trust me it's a really really bad one you 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 believe all that you hear all these things about different people out there, but when you read that document, you'll just sort of go, "Oh shit, I know." Literally, it's crazy. But anyway, guys, moving on. Um, I was just reading through the news this morning there, and I saw something that's kind of weird. Now you know, over the last couple of weeks, we've had we'll talk about this in Thursday's podcast. We had a storm, well, two storms, should we say, in the past week, where we've had heavy rain and really bad winds and. Especially here in Northern Ireland, we've had like trees down and people losing electricity and all that. There's usual stuff you get when you have a storm. But I've been saying, it was, there's been two different things that was been going out in the way the last few days. But this one here is sort of weird. Apparently, we're going to be getting a thing called blood rain. Anybody ever heard of blood rain? Can't say I've ever heard of it. What is, I mean, it says here in the store, what is blood rain? It says here, you might not have heard, blood rain could, could be heading to the UK this week. It doesn't sound as scary as it sounds. This Apparently this happens when high, is it say here in this report here, contracts or, or, of coloured dust and particles get mixed up with rain. It's coming from the Sahara. It gets mixed up in this, apparently, and it turns into the rain that has little red sparticles in it. Which is called blood rain. It also says the red dust in the atmosphere could mean some colourful sunsets in the part of the UK as well. We all love a good sunset, don't we? But blood rain, I can't say I've never ever heard of blood rain. So I have blood rain, strange one. But then they're saying as well, party next week, <laughs> we're going to be getting more snow. So yeah. There you go. We're going to get more snow next week. I believe I'm going to fucking see it. <laughs> I'm sick of looking at fucking snow. <laughs> oh, I don't freaking know. I give up. Um, One wee story popped up in the... St- <laughs> here in Northern Ireland, especially. Manchester United footballer Marcus Rashford, apparently, was up partying in Belfast. Anybody up in Belfast seen Marcus Rashford knocking around Belfast? No. Apparently he was out with the boys. He was out in a, he was staying in a fifteen hundred pound a night fucking hotel, whatever the fuck he was staying in. And he was out partying with his mates in Belfast. He was spotted in a couple of nightclubs in Belfast. And apparently he was phoning in sick the old uh, to the Manchester United team. He was telling me he wasn't feeling well. But would you not be if you're on a fucking two day bender in Belfast? <laughs> apparently he was up there with his mates, and he was out having a good time. And apparently everybody up there was loving it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jamas not go out on Saturday night and there's Marcus Rashford sitting there I don't know I've seen a couple of things knocking about on social media over the weekend and stuff about it and it was kind of like is there Marcus Rashford really in Belfast he, he missed the United Cup tie at the weekend um, which they won by the way by the skin of their fucking teeth um, but apparently he was partying in Belfast so there you go Marcus Rashford crazy Guys, a wee story here I wanted to bring up today. That's broke this morning. Now, you remember a couple of months ago we were getting emails from people like talking about the, the dangers in their areas of, you know, people carrying weapons. We've talked about this a couple of times in the podcast, you know, in the likes of London and other areas. You know, people going around now carrying swords and knives and, and things like that. There was a man apparently arre- uh, arrested and shot dead by police. By going round with a fucking crossbow. Like, what the... What? <sighs> Here's the story it says this morning. A man has been shot dead by police in South London of reports he was armed with a crossbow and trying to force his way into, into houses. Metropolitan Police said armed officers were called to a house uh, just before 5 o'clock this morning. The man in his 30s was allegedly threatening to hurt people in the area and inside with a crossbow. Apparently he was shot dead on the spot by the police. A fucking crot man saying that there. Now I'm going to say something here. And if you want to th- think I'm being fucking racist, then think whatever you want. But if it was me, 
and one of them motherfuckers came to my door with, with what they had in their hand at the time, I'd be trying to get them out of my out of my way. But recently, where I live here, I've said this before, but there's a hotel here where I live in Northern Ireland, and it's filled of the immigrants, the refugees from Afghanistan, whatever else. Last year, two of them went to a lady's door in this fucking town with machete swords trying to take her fucking car. Machetes, I know, big fucking giant swords. And lucky enough, a few people in the wee area, the wee cul-de-sac that she lived in, all got together and came out and chased the bastards away. Now they were caught because they separated and ran down the roads and headed they met back up at the hotel again. But how the two of them were found it was because of the cameras on the roads where they were running down to the cameras you see on like the carriageways and motorways and stuff. That's how they were caught. Fucking machetes. So they're carrying machetes, nigh crossbows, swords, knives, whatever what the fuck are they carrying next? You know what I mean? It it's just ridiculous. The cri- the crime rate in London especially is going through I mean that, that young guy I remember the email he sent me it was on one of the podcasts a while back he was saying about the da- how much the crime rate has went up in his area you know it's crazy and I mean I'm getting a lot of emails from you guys asking me to talk about the immigration problem here in Northern Ireland too as well which I've talked about a couple of times here on the podcast but I just recently found out where I live at the moment the, at hotel Whenever I live, they're bringing over another hundred men in again, and they're putting more stuff into the trying to squeeze more people into these rooms. And I've said this openly before in this podcast. I haven't got a problem if you come into the UK legally and you work like everybody else, pay your tax, pay your bills, you know, work hard for your family, provide for your family, pay your taxes into the, into the the system, and you know, you're a good living citizen. Not that's fine, but it's the ones that are coming into the fucking country with the uh, are just coming in for a free ride and they're getting everything fucking handed to them and they're causing nothing but problems. Because that hotel near where I live, there's been arrests multiple times because of different things. There's even protests now all the time down there and they're trying to get the council and all the government to get them out because they're concerned. Now, I'll be honest with you, there probably is people down there who are genuine and are there with their, their, their families, whatever, and they're trying to get a home and a better life from the countries that are obviously fucking war zones, which is understandable. But when you get these ones that are coming in and, and they're out causing trouble, and, you know, it's just ridiculous. But I'm not going to get into that right now, guys. It's just what I saw that story about the crossbow. The, the, I was doing a bit of research after before I come on the podcast this morning. The crime rate in London is rising daily. Every day it's getting fucking worse. And it's not even just London. Other main parts of the UK and Ireland. Now, I must say, down south in Republic, but the right idea, they're getting them out. The f- any ones that are causing any problems, get them out the fuck. And that's that, that's a good thing. Maybe we should take a belief out of that book. But again, I'm not going to get into the whole thing about people coming in on boats and all game because you know obviously I've had a couple of emails from people who find it offensive and they cry and they go you're being a fucking racist you can't say this no listen if you don't like my own these podcasts then switch off and go and listen to something else but just a crossbow like fuck me machete swords crossbows you know I, I just what what is the world coming to it's it's oh I don't know I really don't know. But anyway, it's just a couple of things I wanted to bring up this week, so crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm going to move on into some of your questions now, guys, because I've been babbling on here. I'm just looking at the recording device here. I've been babbling on here for 45 minutes, and I'm going to, what do you call it? I'm going to uh, answer some of your questions here from social media and emails and stuff like that before I head off and head off to get the rest of my day started and get a, a wee vlog started today as well and I've got a few wee things to do today too so yes the joys right let's get into some of your questions I'll start off with the email I've came prepared today guys I've got everything all set up and ready to rock and roll so I have I've came today and I'm prepared <laughs> again if you want to contact me by the email guys it's Podcast at yahoo.com Podcast at yahoo.com Right, let's get into the first one here today from Stephen. Stephen is from, where is he from? Oma in Northern Ireland. Hello, Stephen from Oma. How are you doing? 
from, I, Oom was one of them places I've only ever really drove through. I haven't really spent time in Oom. I've drove through it many a time going to football games. Yeah. Well, Stephen writes to me on the email here today. Let's have a read here and see. I need to zoom in more on my screen. This is where I need to start wearing my glasses more, guys. I'm definitely getting fucking old. <laughs> Stephen writes, Hi, Matthew. just wanted to ask you a question about the situation with Stormont in Northern Ireland and all the news in the last 24 to 48 hours. What's your view on this? I think it's an absolute shambles the way our country is at the moment. What is your view on this? Well, Stephen, you know I've been talking about this, my view of this country for a long time. Stormont is the fucking circus on top of the hill. Apparently they've made some agreement here now. I've been browsing through the stories this morning on the on the news that apparently they've uh, came to some agreement about sharing power or something like that. I haven't really read much into it. And I know Facebook and Instagram and all was going mental last night. People were like talking about it all over social media. I didn't really pay much attention to it last night. I ended up going around to see my parents last night and just sat with them for a couple of hours and haven't seen mum and dad in a few days, so I went around to see them instead. Um, I could talk about over here for years to come, for hours, and I, I, I don't even want to get into it because it's a whole embarrassment. The whole country's an embarrassment. As I said to you, the, Stormont's the circus on top of the fucking hill. Especially even during COVID, they couldn't run a fucking bath, never been run the country. But apparently there's some agreement. So there has been made today, which I'll probably read into more after I get off the podcast this morning here. And I'll probably might mention it on Thursday, I don't know. But Stephen, the answer to your question, this country, I said that Stormer couldn't run a bath. Never mind a fucking country. Joke. Run by a bunch of clowns. As I always call it, the circus on top of the hill. <laughs> As I always say, circus on top of the hill. So there you go. But thanks for your question, Stephen. And I hope uh, you're keeping well. Thank you very much for that. Right, let's get on the other one here. Saying, do, 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 do. right, there's one here from Brendan. Brendan is from, let's have a look and see where he, it doesn't say where he's from. It says, hi, Matthew. Love your podcast. Listen to it every single week. And then he puts it in little brackets. When available. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> nice one, Brendan. <laughs> uh, just wanted to say, keep up the good work. Enjoy listening to your podcast every single week when I'm on the go. Can I ask you, are you ever going to fit, consider doing a video podcast? Because it'd be nice to see you sitting there talking to us where we can watch you instead of listening to you. And also listen to you on Spotify as well. Keep up the good work. Well, a lot of you have been sending me about from the 100th episode of the podcast, which is creeping up soon, that I should be doing a video podcast. And do you know something? I'm, I'm really considering doing it. Because I've been looking into getting stuff to maybe try and build like a wee sort of like podcast table stroke studio thing where I can put it out a video podcast. Because a lot of people prefer sometimes to even watch the podcast, which is understandable. Um, so yes, maybe. I'll try and get that sorted out. What are we on? Like, is this like episode 92 or something there? Or whatever it is. I can't. counted it the other day. It's 92 or 93 we're on now. So I need to get my skates on. So we do get the stuff together. Get ready to rock and roll. So which means I have to get new microphones and bits and bobs as well. So yes, leave it with me. And see what I can do. <laughs> right, I'll do one more on the email before I move into the social media. Right, let's have a look. Emails. Right, one here from Jeanette. Hello, Jeanette. Where are you from? Jeanette is from... Doesn't say. Guys, put on your emails. I know obviously in social media it's different. I can click on your profile and see where you're from. Email. Let me know where you're from. So it does. Jeanette says, Hi, Matthew. I've been listening to your podcast for quite a while now and I've noticed that you did say in some of your podcasts that you used to work in retail. I have worked in retail for 27 years and I must say in this day and age of retail is more difficult to work in than what it was when I started back 27 years ago. It is so hard to please customers and also talk to them as you're scared to say the wrong thing as everything offends everybody nowadays, which I think is bullshit. <laughs> what was your experiences like for retail and would you ever consider going back to retail at all in the near future? I wouldn't tell you the company I work in because I don't want to get myself in trouble. But if I worked in, if I had the choice, I would walk away from retail today as it is so difficult and hard to maintain and most importantly, hold your temper with people. Some customers can be complete assholes and I have no time for them whatsoever. 
But again, you have to bite your tongue and get on with it. Thanks for the podcast every week. I enjoy listening to it and keep up the good work. Well, I'm glad I don't work at retail today. I'd either probably be sacked or in jail. <laughs> People nigh in the public eye are, as she said, can be the biggest bunch of assholes ever, ever, ever existed. Now, don't get me wrong. When I worked in retail, I worked for Curry's for a couple of years, which I enjoyed and I regret it leaving. Left for the wrong reasons. Um. Then I worked for another company, home base, which they were a fucking oh fuck! Don't even get me started working for them. Didn't know their fucking arse from their elbow. That company. I'm just being totally honest. Um. Just a fucking nightmare. So they were. Other retail jobs was was okay as well, or bits and bobs that I've worked in. But I, when I worked in the likes of Curry's, which is a big main chain, obviously you did get the occasional numpty that used to come in thinking they were smart arses and thought they knew better than you and they thought they knew it all. And some of them still had the old mentality of like coming in going, especially the older generation used to come in and go, "What's the best deal you can do for me for cash?" The price in the ticket. Or if you were, my, my motto was if you were coming in to buy stuff from me, whether it be a fridge freezer or a washing machine or a TV or a computer or a coffee machine, or you were coming in to spend a lot of money with me, if you were coming in to spend, say you're been to buy a new TV and new surround sound and DVD player and Sky TV, and you were spending at least two or three grand, you know, I would always go to the big boss and say, look, boss, listen, they're spending two or three grand here. Come do we and you're buying all your accessories as well, like you know all your cables and bits and bobs and insurance policies. Not there, I would say, boss. There's any chance we could do this person a wee deal here? Not a few quid off, like just to you know get the deal through the till. Plus, it gets them a, we, we, a few extra quid off for them because they are spending quite a lot of money. You know, and again, we do that and be great. And you build a relationship with your customers and stuff like that's great. But nowadays, pff, fuck me, I could not. I was in. My old work, Curry's, a few months ago, and I was talking to a member of staff, which I'm not going to give their name, by the way, and some of the shit that they have to put up with now. Now, this person didn't work with me when I worked there. I was in looking for some things, and I was talking to him. I said, what's it like working in here now? And he goes, what do you mean? I used to work in here. Oh, did you? I was like, yep. And I goes, what's it like in this situation, that situation, this situation? And he was just like, Matthew, you don't even want to know. And as the as thing said in their email there, you got to bite your tongue now. This, the slightest wee thing you say now, it's like, oh my God, you hurt my feelings. You're offensive. I'm going to have you sacked for what you said. It's like, what the fuck? You know, even going in now, you know, you're scared to say the wrong thing in case they say, oh, I'm not a male, I'm a female, or I'm not a female, I'm a male, or... I'm not this, I'm not that, you're you're hurting my feelings, that offends me what you say, I don't agree with what you say, so I'm going to write, go on to social media and babble my mouth off about it. I couldn't work in retail now. I ended up losing my rag. I, I couldn't. I would just end up just turning and telling people where to go. You know, the old me back, many years my out of Curry's now. Fuck, 16 years? It's hard to believe that. Like, I couldn't go back to a place like that because I'd end up losing my shit. Some people nowadays are too demanding. Cheeky bastards. Just rude and obnoxious. Easily offended. Morons. Now, don't get me wrong, not everybody's like that. Not everybody. There's not a... No, there's not everybody like that. But there's people out there who look to be offended. I've talked about this before many times. People that look out there look to be offended, and if they don't get what they want, they throw their fucking tender tantrums and they rant and rave and ask to speak to their manager. And it's just, I couldn't. I know people who work in, in stores and chains like Home Bargains, B and M, B and M Bargains, Tesco's, and all. I don't know how the fuck to do it. I couldn't. Not not these days. Oh hell no. I couldn't. My daughter worked in a restaurant. 
after when she first was allowed to go out legally working when she got her national insurance number no? and some of the stories that she was telling me about people even in restaurants the way they speak to you I'm like ah oh, fuck that shit I used to have the old saying years ago the customer was always right my mum sometimes was sad to me <laughs> fuck customer's always right bullshit have you seen the come of the customers out? now I'm not saying all customers are like that but there is customers out there who are just I'm just going to be honest with you dicks who are just numpties and haven't got a clue. But my experience in retail was good. I had some good experiences. And as I said to you, when I worked in Curry's for years, I, I loved it. I left for the wrong reasons. I had a disagreement with one of the managers. And I left because of him and I shouldn't have. I should have just stayed. And, you know, I loved it because I've talked about this before, guys. I love gadgets. I love new things. I love... Lewis is like me, computers, TVs, you know, all new gadgets, bits and bobs, you know, even when I go into that old store now and I see all the new stuff that's out there in the market now compared to what it was when I worked there, I'm like, fuck, I would have a field day in here, so I would, I would have an absolute field day in here, all the new phones and technology and oh my god, the time that I had in there at the time it was burning. And the times I could have had still, and I didn't. But the old saying goes, guys, you know, if everything happens in your life for a reason, whether it be good or bad, and, you know, things change for a reason. And, you know, I'm obviously in a better position now than what I was back then. But if there is times I do miss it. I do miss the argy-bargy with the, the punters and the regular customers used to come in all the time and staff. There's just some staff they're still there when I was there and there's a girl who worked there from the mid 90s early mid 90s and she's still fucking there fair play to her <coughs> there's maybe three or four maybe five staff still there and listen fair play to them you know what I mean so they've been there a long 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 time so they have so but yes, to wrap up this subject about retail, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it nowadays. I actually couldn't. I would end up, I wouldn't have the patience for it now, especially the way some people talk to you now and the way they get on with you now and they're easily offended and they're just fucking crybabies. I couldn't. No, no thank you. But anyway, thank you for your email. Sorry for my rant, but thank you for your email. <laughs> just have to thank you, appreciate it. <coughs> right, let's get on to the Instagram. I'll do two on Instagram, two on Facebook, and then I'll call it a day because I've been rambling on here for quite a bit today. So I have rambling on for quite a bit. Instagram. Right, let's have a look here and see. Right, I have one here from Albert on Instagram. Let's have a look and see where he's from. Albert is from Manchester. Hello, Albert. And it's not a football question, which is great. Albert goes on to say to me here, Matthew, I've been listening to your podcast for about seven months now, and I must say I do enjoy it. I don't agree with everything you say, but I do enjoy it. Most of the stuff you talk about, I have a good laugh with, but I enjoy listening to you rant and rave, which is great to see. It's a different side I see of you than what I see on your YouTube channel, which is great. I have a serious question for you, and I'd like to see if you could try and help me. I'm currently going through a divorce at the moment, like yourself when you went through your divorce. I'm also struggling financially. I have got myself in a lot of debt and I don't know what way to turn. I've tried to speak to different people for help, but again, it's all about money. They want to charge you for advice. They want to charge me for this and that and everything. I don't know what to do. Can I ask you for some advice on what to do and how to turn and where to turn to? Have you ever had any major financial uh, issues yourself in the past? Because this email goes on quite a bit, actually. Um, because I would like to see if you could give me some advice and also what your coping mechanisms were whenever a marriage ended. Thank you for taking the time to read my message. If it gets to you, I would like you to read it out on the podcast because I'm sure there's other people out there like me who struggle like myself. Thanks for reading my message. I do appreciate it. Keep up your good work on your podcast and your YouTube channel. Look forward to hearing what you say about this. Okay, wow. Bit of a message there for me today. Um, yeah. Do you know something? I 
I know where you're coming from. I've been divorced. It's hard. All I can say to you is, is just take every t- every day as it comes. Nothing gets healed and nothing gets fixed overnight. You know, it, it'll take you a long time. I don't know how long you, you, you've been together. I don't know. I mean, with myself, I mean, it was a long, long time, like 15 years. It broke my fucking heart. It, it drove me to rock bottom. When it comes to your financial problems, yes, I have been there. Trust me. I have been there. I when my marriage ended, I ended up in a shitload of debt. And that was no reason it was pushing me towards rock bottom. Between losing my home at the time, not saying broken loose, losing my, my family car, the family home, all our savings, fucking pretty much everything I owned, gone, wiped out, homeless, on a sofa in my brother's apartment with nothing. Um, when you come to yourself being in financial problems, yes, I understand. You speak to these different people and they say, oh yeah, we'll charge you for the help with this and we'll charge you to help you with that. Look, listen, there's other ways out of it. Again, it depends how much debt you're in. All I can all I can say to you is, is to seek legal advice. Now, I don't know why you're working at the moment because if you are working, it will cost you money to get, like obviously solicitors and what not if you're not working then i would suggest you speak to citizen advice or one of the local places nearby where you can go and speak to them and get free legal advice now i don't know how much debt you're in because you haven't said whether it's a lot of money i don't know but again there's always a way out there's always a way out for you i thought that at the time whenever i was sitting in my, my bras one night Literally at rock bottom, ready, to, ready to like literally fucking consider even doing myself any times, where I was left in hundreds of thousands of pounds of debt, with credit cards, loans, fucking everything you can think of. Lost my home, lost the family car, lost all my savings. You know, not everything gone. Not seeing the kids. You know, with no, just the clothes on my back, living on my brother's sofa with nothing. And at the end of the day, it does affect you in all, all ways, different ways. Even your mental health goes skew alley all over the fucking place. But if you're a strong person and you have beliefs, you will get yourself out of it. Now, I know obviously looking at your profile to see where you were from and stuff like that there. What I'll do is, after I get off the podcast today, I'll try and have a wee look around online for you and I'll send you a couple of wee links and stuff on a message to different places maybe you can go and speak to to possibly, you know, help get some financial advice. Yes, I understand you're going to feel your different earnings as well. But again, it it doesn't get fixed overnight. As I said to you there a minute ago, take every day as it comes. Rome wasn't Rome was, was not built in a day, as the old saying goes. That's what I was preached at the time. My head was here, there, and everywhere, and I was thinking, oh, shit, i got to deal with this, i got to deal with that. i got to get this sort of... Get. Look, listen, everything will sort itself out. The most important thing you can do with yourself right now is try. I know it's probably hard because obviously you're you're in a lot of financial problems and you're obviously going through a, a, a bad time with relationships and stuff like that. Listen, take every day as it comes. Everything will fall into place eventually. It may take a bit longer with certain things than what you expect. Just try your best to think positive. I know it's hard to now thinking, oh shit, I'm all this debt. Oh crap, this is ending and that's ending in my life. I feel like, look, the, the worst thing you can do is give up. If you give up, that that that's, that's the worst thing you can do is give up. It'll not be fixed overnight, but you just try and take the, the steps day by day, week by week, month by month, or if it's year by year, to get yourself sorted. You may think now, oh shit, I've no money, I'm broke, I've all this debt, I'm going through a divorce, I'm getting broke up with my partner, I'm doing all this, blah, 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 blah. Listen, it will all work out in the end. If you have patience and try your best to go to the right people to get the right advice and be put in the right place in the right direction, it may take time, but it will get fixed. Trust me, I've been, listen, 
There's things that have happened to me during that period of time that I've never even spoke about. And I've had friends of mine, long-term friends of mine from school and before that have said to me, how the fuck are you still here? How are you still breathing, Matthew? There's people out there who would have hung themselves or killed themselves or blew their brains out or jumped off a bridge or whatever. But uh, Listen, at the end of the day, find a focus in your life that keeps you going every day. Whether it be if you have children or it's something that you are passionate about. My, my goal was children. My children. They're the ones that kept me going every single day. When I knew that eventually at the, end, at the end of that tunnel, I would have got to see Brooke and Lewis more. I would have been back to, I would have tried to get myself sorted. I would have eventually had myself a new home and I would have had to try and build myself back up again, which I've done. It took me a long time to do it. Hell, a long, long time, but I got there. So all I can say to you is, look, listen, I will send you across a couple of wee bits and pieces where you can go and maybe go and speak to them, a couple of phone numbers and stuff like that. Just don't give up. Keep your head up. You'll be fine. Just keep going there, and most importantly, keep in touch with me and let me know how you're getting on. I don't care if it's a, a message a week or a message a fortnight. Let me know how you're getting on. Because at the end of the day, I've been there. It sucks. It's shit. There's nothing worse than it. When you're sitting there and you're flat broke, you've lost everything, you're crippled in debt, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to turn. And what. Look, listen, you'll get there. Trust me. And when you get there, it's, it's, it's a good place to be. Just keep me posting how you're doing. As I said, when I get off the podcast today, I'll send a wee message over to you later on this afternoon with a couple of wee bits and bobs nearby, places you can go and speak to for financial advice. And I understand, yes, there's places you do go to and they charge you and there's all them ones, them scams and all you see on TV going, oh, no we, no win, no fee, claiming all that bullshit. Look, listen, there's better places to go to than them, trust me. Let me let, leave it with me. Keep your head up and please, please stay positive. Okay? I'll be in touch with you after the podcast today. Right. I'll do a Facebook message. No, I won't do more Instagram, but I'll do a, I'll do a Facebook message and I'll go, guys, because I've been rolling on for quite a bit today. <laughs> so I'll have... Right, let's get in here and see now. Uh, Facebook, right, there we go. Facebook, Mirror Army YouTube channel. Please drop a like on it, guys. I would appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> right, here we go. One here from, let's see, Laura. Laura on Facebook. Hello, Laura. Let's see where you're from. Doesn't send your message. Let's see where you're from on your profile. You are from, doesn't say. <laughs> Great. Hello, Laura. It says to me, hi, Matthew. Hi, are you? I hope you're keeping well. And I hope your household is feeling a lot better as you've all been sick the last few weeks. We're all currently down with the bug as well at the moment in our household, and it sucks. Between feeling like you've been hit by a truck, to having a flu, to feeling like a nightmare. Even my three kids are all off to school at the minute too with it as well. It's horrible. But anyway, my question to you is, how does it feel to have a daughter at 18 years of age now? I watched the video of her 18th birthday and I was so happy to see her have such a great time on her 18th birthday. How does it feel? It won't be long until Lewis is 18 as well. And how will that make you feel? My two, My three kids are aged 2, 7 and 8. They can be hard work, but I would never change them for anything. Keep up the great work on the podcast. Love listening every week. And I hope you and your family are all feeling 100% better. Lots of love, Laura. Well, Laura, thank you very much for that. How does it feel to have an 18-year-old daughter? Don't even remind me. Don't even remind me, because see, since Brooke turned 18, it's been a fucking nightmare. Not in a bad way. It's just like, I think to myself, oh my God, Brooke's 18 now. Oh shit. And then Brooke also herself sometimes think, forgets herself thinking now, I'm 18 now. I can do as say as I please. Uh, well, you yeah, by fuck. <laughs> as I said to her the other day, sometimes she forgets herself when I'm like, Brooke, maybe 18, but you still don't speak to your dad whatever way you want. She'll be a bit of respect. And there's other times where she's thinking she forgets herself. 
and little things around the house and they're like, Brooke, you forgot this, you forgot that. And she's like, but I'm 18 now. And I go, I'll give a shit if you're 18. You still got to pick up after yourself. And she's got, she's at that stage of life now where it's like, oh, I'm 18 now. I can do and go as I please. And like, yeah, okay. We just see when you move out in your own daughter. So I keep reminder. And the other thing about Lewis, yes, Lewis is 15 this March. Three more years and Lewis will be 18 too. Don't even remind me, Laura. Please don't remind me that Lewis is 18 in three years. Shh. He's not. He's still 10 or 9 or 8, whatever he was not when we first started vlogging. He's not that age. Trust me. He's not. <laughs> um... Yeah, and yes, you say all your family sick too, so we all get better soon. That bug was a fucking nightmare. We're all back to normal, like, of course, but it's not good, trust me, it's still going about. That's why I'm trying to tend to avoid people at the minute. Stay away, any coughs or sneezes, fucking keep it to yourself. <laughs> but listen, thank you for your message, darn appreciate it. And thank you for the get well wishes. Hope you and your whole household gets better soon. Um, And yes, it's 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 hard to believe I have an eighteen year old daughter, but don't remember, don't keep reminding me. <laughs> Just a fucking nightmare at times. Anyway, thank you for your message. I appreciate it. Right, guys, I'm gonna go. It's the end of this podcast for today. Thank you for listening as always. Um, if you're listening to us here on Spotify or Apple Music, please add us to your favorites. Also, if you're listening to us here on the YouTube channel, please drop a like on this, and also please, please, please share this channel with all your friends and family, and drop a like on it. I would appreciate it. Back on Thursday, as always, for the Murami podcast. Back on Thursday with the Jackass of the Week. So if you have any suggestions for Jackass of the Week, uh, please send me uh, an email. Also, check out the website, mirrorarmy.co.uk, for all your merchandise and more. You get new t-shirts on there, hoodies, mugs, you name it, we've got. We're going to try and get more out there in the next few days. As well, mirrorarmy.co.uk, as well. I do appreciate it. I'm going to go here now, guys, and get this out and get my day started because i got loads of stuff to do today. I'm recording this first thing this morning, so I want to get this out by probably lunchtime-ish, fingers crossed. And i got loads of work to do today, and I've also got a vlog to record today too as well. Don't forget to go and check out yesterday's video on the channel, but we're going to be doing another one today as well. Right, I'm going to go. So, guys, thank you for listening once again. I do appreciate it. Anything I said you I said in this uh, podcast today and we'll listen to the Vince McMahon stuff. Uh, if you're uh, easily offended by that, obviously it's I, I didn't mention at the start of this podcast. You know, I'm obviously going to apologize for him just stating the fact. Um, but again, on this on these podcast, we like to talk about things like this. So um, if you didn't like it, I'm sorry, but it's just one of those things we had to mention to it today. So, but anyway, guys, I want to go. So until Thursday, I will see you back here for another episode of the Moor Army Podcast. Enjoy your Tuesday. Enjoy your Wednesday. Be safe. And until Thursday, I will see you all back here for another episode. Till then, see you all soon, guys. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.